So let's try something where that's a little bit more complicated. If I just hit back, it's going to bring me back to this main homepage. And let's look at Pixlr Express. Now Pixlr Express will give you a few more options, and, and really this is the more useful uh, of these two that I've shown you so far. And so what we can do is we can either open up a URL, meaning that if you have a picture saved online someplace, we can bring it in through that. We can also just browse the computer, and again we can take a picture from the webcam. They also give you this button for collaging something. So if I bring up the collage, I can change the layout. And if I wanted to, so I think about this almost as um, photo albums, if you wanted to create a photo album in here, all we have to do is pick whichever layout we want, like let's say I want this one, and then I can just start adding images to this, and then correcting them a little bit as I go. I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to do one image from my computer, so I'm going to go to browse, and I'm going to bring up my Trent boat picture. Now this is a picture of my son. <laughs> I'm bringing it up in uh, in the web browser. It just brings up one single picture. I can only do one picture at a time. And it gives you just some really simple UI elements here. And, and this is one of the ways that Pixlr does a, a really good job in, in making it easy to use as opposed to Photoshop that throws you into a, a, a very complicated interface. So what this is going to do, up in the top left we have save and close. That's pretty obvious. Over here on the right hand side it has a zoom feature so I can zoom in and out. It also has an undo and a redo so in case I mess something up I can undo it or go back to something and redo. And then there's also a full screen mode. Now I would suggest using the full screen mode because what is going to happen is if you are in your browser, your browser is going to have a back button. And what you don't want to do is accidentally hit the back button when you were maybe thinking that you just wanted to undo something. And if you hit the back button, it's basically going to not save your not save your image and just throw you back to that main uh, Pixlr home screen. So I would suggest using this full screen option. It'll feel more like you're in just a regular program too. Okay, so let's look at some of the options that they give you. Down here at the bottom are all the UI interface for everything that you can do to this picture. And so they break it down into these uh, six different categories. We have adjustments that we can do. We can add some effects. And a lot of these effects that you're going to see, even the overlays and borders, are going to be the same ones that were in Pixlr-O-Matic that we just looked at. But these give you a few more options and ways to layer them on top of each other, things like that. We also have uh, some fun stuff with stickers, and then we can also add some text. I think the most important part of this is probably adjustments, so that's what I'm going to click on first. You notice that interface sort of opens up. It gives you a bunch of different options that you can use to adjust various different parts of your photo. So one of the most important is we have the crop function. So if you click on crop, it's going to bring up this and it's going to give you this rule of thirds overlay, which is kind of nice. And then all you'd have to do is grab these handlebars these handlers up on the top and we can move them in and you'll see that it even as I'm doing it it gives me the real-time pixels for width and height. Now it also gives you some default uh, scales so if I wanted to keep it 4x3 or I want to give it that Instagram 1x1 one, one one, or maybe I want it 16x9 that's what actually the, the photo was taken in. But let's say I'm gonna crop it in a little bit Make sure that his eye is right on that rule of thirds, so that looks nice. I want to keep that little uh, turtle in there too, because that's cute. So we can add those things, and all we have to do is hit apply, and it automatically updates that, throws us back into this uh, interface. So now, there's lots of different ones here at the bottom. I'm not going to go through every single one. Uh, I would suggest going in there, playing with some of these, seeing which ones work for you and which ones don't. One of the nice ones that, that I definitely want to show you is uh, the color effect. And what this color effect can do is it can add some saturation to our uh, to our image or it can take it all away if I want to do a black and white photo. And then there's also the lightness because a lot of times when you desaturate things it becomes too light so I'm going to add a little darkness to it. Hit apply. And then if I decide yeah but now it's not as contrasty as I wanted to hope or I was hoping it would be. I'm going to click on the contrast Add a little bit of contrast to that. Kick up the brightness just a tiny bit more. 
hit apply. Now you can see that once I've added an effect or, or changed any of these colors, there's no way to undo them without just going to undo at the top. When we get to actually the uh, Pixlr editor, we can add those to layers and things like that and we can go back to this. But that's why I was saying that this is definitely a simpler interface than when we get to editor. But it will be a good option if you just want to edit just the style of one photo. So it gives you all these, all these different uh, aspects. Let's go to effect. Basically, uh, once you hit effect, it's going to bring up a few different styles of effect in a few different categories. So there's the creative ones, which, you know, are okay. Some of these other ones are a little nicer when it does uh, just filters that are going on your photo. So let's say we wanted to make this photo look old. So we have some different styles that we can add to it. Some sepia tones and things like that. But what's nice about this is, if we decide, okay, so this, I like this style of this effect, but it's starting to look a little creepy. He, he almost maybe looks like a child of the corn here. Um, so what's nice is they have this amount slider at the bottom. So what this is, is this is, you can take the transparency of this effect from 100% and we could just slide it back like maybe I like that but you know 100% is too much too too harsh let's slide it back and I'll do it maybe 60% so that gives it that nice uh, a touch of the old school filter without me uh, uh, getting into the creepy zone so once once I've decided that that looks good I'm just gonna hit apply and that's gonna apply it to my image now we also have overlays. We sort of saw this in the pixel or omatic one. But what's nice about this is, again, that we can choose any of these and we can take that transparency down. We can, we can reduce the amount that it's used in our photograph. So if I decide that I wanted to maybe, mm, let's try the vignette. So here's a bunch of different vignettes that it's going to give me to go around my picture. Now if I decide, yeah, that's that's a cool vignette, but I want to take it down a little bit, I can just slide that slider back and maybe do 65% of that. Now some of the other options around here is I can also rotate that filter. It's sort of hard to tell what's going on there, but basically it's rotating at 90 degrees. Or I can flip it from left to right or up and down. And maybe I like that vignette, so I'm going to click this heart. And that's going to add a heart next to it anytime I go back to know that, yeah, th that was one that I really enjoy. So I won't have to scroll through looking for that one. Okay, I'm going to hit apply. So now we have that nice vignette effect to this. And again, go through these different ones and figure out exactly w which ones you like or which ones are going to uh, work best with your photo. Basically, all of these have a, a myriad of effects within each uh, category. That's starting to maybe look, uh, again, a little creepy. So I'm going to click that away. Okay, the next one that we have is border. So this border, uh, again, gives us a whole bunch of different borders that we can use within our picture. When we were using pixel or omatic, it maybe only gave us like a dozen that we can use. This one has a lot. So if I want to uh, look inside the category of ripped paper, we can get a bunch of different ripped paper effects. And maybe I like that one, but maybe again I want to push it push it back a little bit. And I'm gonna hit apply. Now these last two, uh, the sticker is really just for fun. Uh, we're gonna, if you want to, you can add some of these stickers to here. Uh, some of them can be sort of for fun. Some of some of them are are a little more uh, uh, clip arty. But if I decide that I want to give my son maybe this mustache. It'll add it to the screen, and then it'll give me these handlebars so I can scale it down or rotate it. Cool, and now he's looking dapper. <laughs> I like it. And then if I decided I wanted to add any text, we can also do that here. Now this text is, again, a little uh, limited. You won't be able to just pull fonts from your computer. They give you fonts that are specific for this, and they give it to you in a few different categories here. We have sans serif and serif, uh, some of these handwritten ones, or grunge. Uh, I'm going to do handwritten because it seems like a little kid font. And then if you want to change the font, you can just click on font, 
and then scroll up and down and see the different fonts they give you. Now it's quite a few, you know, uh, that, that's a good amount for, for a free program to be able to give you. So uh, maybe I'm going to use Idlewild. So now that I've chosen the font that I want, I can type the text here. So I'm going to say... Call it Trent in a boat. And if I want to change the color, I can do that over here in the color palette and it'll automatically update it up on the top. Scroll through the different colors here and it'll give you a way to make it more transparent if you'd like to. Purple, that's a little harsh. I'm going to do white. Just click away. Now, uh, there is some very basic alignments and, and uh, other types of options that you can do for the font. Really, all you're going to be able to do is type it in here and then select whether you wanted to justify it left, middle, or center, which is if we had multiple words, we'd be able to do that. Now you'll notice that there's nowhere to uh, change the uh, the height or the uh, size of the font. We, we can't make this 12-point font or 18-point font. What it does is it gives me these handlers, and it just says, okay, do it yourself. So you can add this up into the corner if I wanted to, and picture my little mustached boy, uh, Trent in a boat. So now that we've added that up to the top, I can hit apply. Now if I didn't like this Trent in a boat, notice I can't move this at any point afterwards. So I've created this, I've added it into here. If I don't like the placement of this, the only thing that I can do is hit undo. So I, I can't go back in, that isn't a layer that I can then move afterwards. And in fact, if I don't like that I turned this photo black and white, there's nothing really I can do about that at this point. I could undo all the way back and undo everything to the very beginning, but really everything that you're adding to us, you're slapping onto the top of your photo and really you're unable to change it. But still, uh, I, I sort of liked adding Trent in a boat, so I'm going to redo that and, and give me everything that's there. And then I can see what this would look like at 100%. So 100% is what this is going to look like when I very first print it out. And if you wanted to move around within this, you can use this navigator up at the top. So I'm going to zoom it out. That's what this little downward arrow does. It gives me my picture in the full frame. And I'm going to save this. I, I like how this looks, I guess. Um, and I'm going to hit save up at the top. So I'm going to give it a, uh, a new name. I'm going to call it Trent Boat Vintage. And you can see that it gives me uh, some quality sliders here, uh, one quality slider here in the middle. And it defaults it to 85, it's trying to save you some space. If you want to just kick it up to 100, you know, it did add quite a bit of that uh, to, my, uh, to my file size. But really, I, I don't care about that too much. I I'm fine with, with using the space and keeping it a nice big photograph. So I'm going to hit save, and again it's just going to ask, well, okay, where do you want to save that? I'm going to hit save. Okay, so the final one we're going to look at, and really the most important of the Pixlr services that they're going to give you, is this Pixlr Editor.